بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضاه أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has facilitated for us these classes here these lessons here which we are entitled Quranic studies for indeed there are various aspects pertaining to the book of Allah that every Muslim should be first and foremost that they should be aware of and that they that they know that these topics first and foremost they exist in the book of Allah and if you ask uh, many Muslims what's in the book of Allah they might think it and it is just some ahkam some rules and regulation and the stories of the prophets that's probably what they think that Islam is Islam in it is in the Quran, it's the stories of the prophets, and it's the rules and regulations of the Islam, and other than that, they might not know exactly what is in it. So, that was the uh, primary objective of these classes, and many are not, they're not aware of the detailed topics that are in the book of Allah that affect their daily lives and encounters that they come in with. Here, particularly in the lands of uh, in the lands of disbelief, we come in contact with disbelievers, and disbelievers are of different nature. Now, um, yeah, there's Christians, different kinds. I mean, there's Jews, there's people who don't even uh, attach themselves to any religion, but they do believe in Allah. You know, there's people who don't believe in Allah. Now, um, there's people who believe in Allah and they just totally, totally recalcitrant and disobedient to Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions these kind of uh, people in his book. Now, also, we just wanted to present this book to raise the awareness of my brothers and sisters of what is in the book of their Lord. And it will be more of an encouragement for them to pay more attention to the book of Allah. The book of Allah is a book that's studied. It's studied. Nah. So I encourage all of you to read. This book is worth memorizing. It's worth memorizing. And memorizing is only going to happen salam. It's only going to happen by hard work. When it comes but that you have to sit down, you have to go over it and over and over it and and to memorize. And uh memorizing it uh it's going to require from you specific time. You need a time. You know? So it's better for you to uh, calculate for yourself and arrange for yourself a time to memorize. Now, don't say that I'm going to do it next week. I'm going to start. Just start. Just start. Just start. Look at a time that's appropriate and a method that's appropriate. Now, if you know how to read, that's good. If you don't have to know how to read, you should listen to it. And follow along with it. Nah. Also, you have to figure out how much you want to memorize in one seating. Do you want to do a whole page, a half a page, a third of a page, a quarter of a page? Nah. Mm-hmm. How much should you do? How much should somebody do? How much should a, a, a person do? A page, a half a page? How much should somebody do? According to their capability. What is best? According to that individual. Now, when day should they memorize? During the day, during the night, during the afternoon, according to that person's schedule. Now, many people might find themselves they have free time after Fajr. So I encourage everybody not to sleep after Fajr, but rather go to bed early. Now, go to bed early, don't sleep after Fajr. Now, and try to spend after you finish making Salat al Fajr and uh, making your adhkar. To try to take that time to memorize. Take that time to memorize. A brief way to memorize is to take an ayat. Like if you're going to memorize three ayats, take one of them and review it. Review that ayat. So you're going to memorize three ayats. So you're going to memorize, Qulhu Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad, Lam Yudit, Wa Lam Yulad, Wa Lam Yakul Lahu Kufu Wa Nahad. All right, four ayats. You're going to take the first ayat and you're going to repeat it five times. Qulhu Allahu Ahad, Qulhu Allahu Ahad, Qulhu Allahu Ahad, Qulhu Allahu Ahad. 
Well, Mus'haf, the book of Allah is open in front of you and you're looking at it. Then you're going to say Allahu Samad, Allahu Samad, Allahu Samad five times and you're looking at it. And then you're going to recite, Lam Yalid wa Lam Yulad, Lam Yalid wa Lam Yulad, and you're going to recite it five times and you're looking at it. And the same thing with the last verse, Wa Lam Yakullahu Kufu Wa Nahal. After you cite it five times and you're looking at it, you're going to go back to the top and you're going to recite each ayah four times. Now you started with five, then you're going to start it with four. This is like preparing this page and these words and these ayats for memorization. It's totally new to you. You want to prepare it on your tongue, on your eye, on your ear. You want to get used to it. You want to start saying it four times. And you're going to look at it every time. And you're going to make it audible where you hear yourself. Naam. And you're going to go to the next ayat. Allah, some you're going to read that four times. And Lam Yalid wa Lam Yulad. You're going to read that four times. Wa Lam Yakullahu Kufu wa Ahad. You're going to read it nicely and clearly. You're not going to mumble it. Going along, going along, going along. Lam Sam, Lam Sam, Lam Sam, Lam Sam. Now you're going to say it nice and clearly. And you're not going to over exaggerate. No, you're not doing a tajweed test here. We just we're trying to memorize it. And the way that it enters into your heart is through what? Your eyes and your ears. So you want to look at it all the time and you want to hear yourself all the time. And this is how it's going to get impressed in your heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission. So you're going to say that four times, then you're going to go back to the top, then you're going to say it three times. You're looking at it. Don't close the book. Some people, they're their own enemy when it comes to the read Quran. Your soul wants to see it. They say, No, keep the book open. Don't, don't do this. Open the book, then you close the book, then you open the book. No, leave the book open. Your soul wants to see it, and you close it. Nope, you can't see it. Then you get stuck. No, leave it open good 20 minutes. It's going to take you, when you're doing a half a page or a quarter page, when you read each ad five times, then four times, then three times. When you read it three times, you're going to realize, I, I got it. But you're not going to stop there. You're going to read each of it two times. Then you're going to go back to the top. If you're in a rush... Then forget it. You're not going to have any tawfiq if you're in a rush. There's no rush. This is Quran time. This is your Quran time that you made for yourself, for the book of your Lord. Nah, there's no rush. Nah, then when you're going to say it one time, you're going to read the whole surah five times. You're going to go back to the top. You're going to get each ayat and you're going to get the sequence that it comes in. After you did that, you started with five, then four, then three, then two, then one. You got the one, you ready for five? After you did all that, this is the first time you're going to close the book. First time. Mm. On the other time, you, read, you don't take your eyesight off of the book and say, No, keep your eye on the book and keep hearing yourself. Now, then after you finish all that, when you're doing like a half a page, it's going to be a good 15 minutes just for preparation. Nah, you're going to close the book for the first time and you're going to see if you have. You're going to say, Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad, walam, wa, wa. If you have a mistake, yeah. ooh, some people have what they call Qata al Dahar. They have this make mistake every time they come. Qata al Dahar means they, they have it for a lifetime. Yeah. Every time they read Quran, they fall right in the same hole. They fall right in the same hole because they never stop. Just to open up and say, why do I keep making this mistake? They never figure it out. They just go and they make the mistake and the guy says, no, in the thing. And they go, says, and they go, and they say, well, I'm like, I says, no, for I'm not. And every time they get to that place, they make the same mistake. So if you find that you make a mistake, you're going to get the book. You're going to open it up where you had it stuck at. You're going to read it 10 times. You're going to get that thing out of your head. The misunderstanding, take it far away from your vision. From that, take it far away. Read it ten times so you don't make that mistake. Then you're going to try it again. That place where it was a mistake, it's going to be the strongest ayat now. If you got through it, with no mistakes, now you're going to start memorizing. You haven't memorized it yet. Now you got through it one time, 
Now you're going to start memorizing. Now you're going to sit down. You're going to look at the clock. You're going to give yourself 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and just sit up. قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يلد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد قل هو الله أحد الله. Some people give the example, like you might have something in your phone. It has a memory chip. What you call a vacuera? I used to some may have a vacuera. The memory chip that's in your phone. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. That's on your memory chip, and then you have a you have a, a a memory that's inside the phone that you can take out. It yeah. stays with the phone. So it's like you're taking the thing from the memory chip and you're transferring it, you're moving it to the phone. So that when you first just get it, I got it. Some people close the book and get up. That memory lasts 24 hours. 48 hours and it's gone. <laughs> no, that's, that's a 48 hour memory. That's on your memory chip. That's on your memory chip. But now you want to take it to the inside, your, you know, your iPhone. You want to put it inside. Nah, nah, that's when you sit down and you give. Some people say, I don't like to give a number 100 times, 500 times. It's according to your, your energy. If I say 500 times, you're going to say, oh, man, I can't do it. Mm-hmm. No, so just put it on time. Nah, give yourself 15 minutes. After fudge it, you have a half hour to try to get it down. I mean, 15 minutes to try to get it down. The other 15 minutes to just review it. No book. You had the time with the book open all that time? No book. It sounds easy with it. But when you, anywhere you're in the Quran. But listen, if you make a mistake, that's good. Because you're going to know what. When you make that mistake, you're going to open up that book and you're going to see where the problem is and you're going to attack it. And take it out. Now you're going to have some type of earnestly with it. Nah. And that's as far as what? Memorizing. Nah. And then you have, on the other hand, your review. You have, on the other hand, what? Your review. Your muraja. Nah. So you have to spend some another time of the day that you review. Nah. So that's basically what you do. You have a memory in your view. And then you have other time that you may have where you want to read Quran. Nah. You have time where you just read, might you want to just read a story that you don't know. But you're going to, you're going to see that every time you enter a new surah, man, the, the shok and the iman and the interest and the thing that you have, it's not like you're going to come to a new surah and you're going to be like, oh, what's in this surah today? Oh, what's this? Way? Every time you get to a new page, your mind and your eyes don't know where you're going. Nah, and it's just like you got new words, you got new things, you got new nah. And then you're gonna enjoy it. Some sometimes when you're reviewing the Quran, there's some page that you love, it might be an ayat that you love, some eyes you can't go past. When you're reviewing it, you just stop at the ayat and subhanallah. You might just cry, you might just stop at the ayat and you have to review this ayat like just the eye you love it so much, you just review it five times, then you keep on going. Just the love that you have for that ayat. Nah. And everybody has their own uh, personal uh, influence and things that affect them from the book of Allah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to aid us in all that. Now, um, there was a, uh, when you memorize Quran, it's, it's good to have ikhlas. And it's, it's sometimes, sometimes people need examples to help them have ikhlas. Now, um, but one of the things that help you memorize Quran is to say, I'm going to memorize the Quran for the sake of the Muslims. They're all, they're busy. We're working. Alhamdulillah, they're working in the halal, but they're busy. I got it. I'm going to memorize it for you all. Nah-uh. For us, I'm going to memorize it for the Muslims. Nah-uh. So that we have somebody amongst us that can lead the salah. And this is what the father looks at. He has all these sons. This one's a doctor. This one's will be an engineer. Okay, none of them, you want them to learn Quran. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And a lot of children, they memorize Quran because their parents encourage it. Mm-hmm. Nah. When, it's like, when it's like a chore, like did you take out the garbage? Did you clean up your room? Did you memorize? No, you, you, you're not going outside. You're not, you're, not, you're not going to bed into you. It's like something that's mandatory. When it's like that, mashallah, it happens. But if he's just on his own and, you know, it's not there, but it has to be that kind of encouragement. I'm so proud of you. Mashallah, you, you're doing good. You memorize that? Mashallah, that's good. Come on, let's get that. I want you to get that down. Get it good. Oh, you made a couple of mistakes today. I don't know, you know. So it, it, that, that helps a lot. There's a, 
one of the scholars in the past, his name is Al-A'mash, Sulaiman ibn Mihran, Abu Muhammad al-Kufi al-Asadi. He's a muhaddith, and he used to have a Qur'an circle with some kids, and they used to blame him, like, you're a muhaddith, and you're sitting here with these kids? He said, no, these kids, I'm having to memorize for you your religion, because you're too busy. Mm-hmm. Now, they're going to memorize for you the book of your Lord, and the religion, for all the rules, they're going to memorize it for you. Because if y'all don't get it down, it's going to be forgotten. Yeah. Nah. So that's what we want to do. And, uh, and the situation that we're in is, is kind of difficult. You know, you know how many masjids there are? They don't have any classes. You know how many masjids, how many children that have no idea, never had a Quran class, they never had, you know. When I was young, I always wanted to study Quran, wanted to study Quran. It was like a dream. It was, it was khayali. It was something that was imaginary. Like, I have a shake and every guy, I do him. Oh, yeah, that's it. I was like, it was something that was just far-fetched. I didn't know. When you're in America, you don't know what American passport is. I didn't know what American passport is. You could take it, you could go all over the world. I didn't know, you know. But uh, it's very possible. So when I was here, I was to make sujood. I just wanted to make sujood. I just wanted to come off of sujood, and I was in Yemen. That's all I wanted to do. <laughs> just come out of sujood <laughs> one day, and I was in Yemen. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala haqqata. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it real. Nah. It was something that was far-fetched. It was something imaginary that I would have a Quran class. You know what I'm saying? And it shouldn't be like that. You know, people have Quran classes all over the world. And some countries, mashallah, they are very strong. Countries outside of countries that speak Arabic. Forget the Arab countries. But countries like Indonesia, countries throughout Africa that are not Arab, Bangladesh and India, mashallah, the attention that they give to the Quran is very high. You understand what I'm saying? And one of the miracles of the Quran that if you hear somebody reciting, you don't you can't say, Oh, he's he's Sudani. You don't know where he's from. You know what I'm saying? But if he was speaking, you'd be like, uh, it sounds like he's from Indo Pak or it sounds like he's from Asia. He's he's he's, he's, he's Asian, no doubt. He's Indian. He's not. But when they recite that Quran, it's gone. We don't we can't chase it. We can only connect it back to that that's the book of Allah. So today, uh, uh, we want to look at one more aspect of the Qur'an. We looked at a lot of different aspects of the Qur'an. In reality, ignorance is a calamity. It's a musibah, al-jahal. That you don't understand your religion. That's a musibah. And ignorance, man jahila shay'in, adu. Whoever is ignorant of something, he hates it. He doesn't like it. So this is why people find difficulty in their religion, and they, you know... Because they're just ignorant of it. And if they knew that this is what your soul is thirsty for, you understand what I'm saying? And what you're dying for, what you really need is this. They would have a different aspect. It comes from the hadith of Abi Umama. We read this hadith before. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ta'allamu al-Baqarah. Who could finish the hadith? Learn al-Baqarah. What did the Prophet say after that? Because if you learn al-Baqarah, <laughs> no, <laughs> don't ask. <laughs> Who can continue? What tarkuhu hasra? Now let's just stop right there. Could you imagine? Tarkuhu hasra. How the call Rasul? Leaving a sort of bakara is is hasra. Hasra is grief and sorrow. Now you just imagine how many people don't read bakara. You have to read these sorrows. No, you have to read these services. Read it. Read it. Ta'allamu al-Baqarah. What does Ta'allamu al-Baqarah mean? Does it mean memorize it? Does it mean also with tajweed? Does it mean tafsir? It can all of that. No, I'm all of that. No, I'm all of that. فَإِنَّ أَخْذَهُ بَرَكَ وَتَرْكُهُ حَسْرَ لَا يَسْتَطِيعُهَا الْبَطَلَةِ يَعْنِي الصَّحَرَةِ for is is a book in it is baraka meaning when you memorize it it's going to aid your life it's going to aid your religion Na'am. it's going to put baraka in your life Na'am. yeah Abu Bakr today is Friday 
Oh, you have to have filled your mouth. Oh. Yeah. So today we want to look at the greatest benefit in the book of Allah. No doubt this is the greatest benefit in the book of Allah. We looked at different ayats and different things. But this is the greatest benefit in the book of Allah. And that is that this book describes for us our Lord. If it wasn't for the book of Allah, we wouldn't know Allah. And how do we know Allah? We know Allah by his names and his descriptions. We know Allah by his names and his descriptions. And verily, what the Christians and the Jews have done with the descriptions of Allah is they distorted it and they lied about Allah. And forget that other than what the Christians and Jews say about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, is far-fetched. It's very bad. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed in his book his names and his descriptions. So we want to go over just a brief analysis and look at the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some basic, some basic things that everybody needs to know about the names of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says about his names, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا Okay, what, did, we, did we study this before? What does husna mean? To Allah belongs لِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى What is husna? What is husna? Okay, is, is, is husna, is this mufra, is it singular? Is it plural? Plural or for Hassan? It's plural for what? Hassan. For? Hassan. For Hassan. Hassan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> husna is plural for Ahsan. Ahsan. Yeah. What does Ahsan mean? The best. The best. Yeah. I'm going to say Muhammad Hassan. Mm-hmm. Zaydan Ahsan. Yeah. Nah. Yes. Muhammad is good. Mm-hmm. Like in Zayd is Hassan. But it's Ahsan. Zayd is Ahsan. It's better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If we say the best name, we say Al Ism Al Ahsan. The best name. Because name is singular. Al Ism Al Ism Al Ahsan. The best name. But when we say Al Asma, we can't say Al Asma Al Ahsan. Because Asma is plural now. We say Al Asma Al Husna. Asma Al Husna. It's the plural of Ahsan. And Ahsan is what? Ism Tafdeel. Ism Tafdeel is a sifa ma'al musharaka. It's a description which shows that it's better than something else. It's a description and that it's better. It shows al mufadala wa musharaka. There's more. Right. So Allah has the greatest of names. Why is his name the greatest names? That's what we want. Who's going to answer? It doesn't say Allah has good names. Asma al Hasana. La al husna. He has the greatest of names. Why are they the greatest of names? Uh, one, they are all praiseworthy. That's the first thing. All of Allah's names have good in it. Al qawi. What's good? Is it good? Is it good to be strong or weak? Weak strength. That's the thing. Is it good to be seeing or to be blind? Allah's able to see him. Is it good to be samir or asam? Is it good to be hearing or deaf? Allah has no name except it indicates good. No name except it indicates good. Allah al Hay al Qayyum is Hay. Is it is good is is being alive or dead? Which one is a good quality? Alive. Nah. Now Allah doesn't have any name except it indicates goodness. What's another reason why Allah has the greatest of names? Every name that Allah has is not just a name; it's also a description. description. Like somebody's name might be Hakim, mm. he has no wisdom. Somebody's name might be Saleh, he's Saleh. Mm. No, nah, he's not Saleh. Somebody's name might be Tawil, and he's short. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Somebody's name might be Shamsuddin, or who are Vulamuddin. He has no light with him. Nor the Dean, and he's the opposite of it. You understand what I'm saying? That's our name. It's just a name. Yeah. It's just a name. No, Allah is his name. And he has that description of it. But that's the second reason. What's the third reason Allah's names are the best of names? That this description he has is on the highest of level. That if his name is Basir, meaning to see, he actually sees 
and his eyesight, nothing passes it by. And if his name is Alim, okay, he, he, he has knowledge, and his knowledge surpasses everything. And nothing goes past his knowledge. And his mercy, the same thing with his mercy, he has he described with this on the highest of levels. Um, and all his names, they're in the book of Allah. They're all wahi. Nobody could come up with a name and call him like the kitchens call him the father, the son. Now you can't come up with a name. Can't come up with a name. Nah, they're all tawqifiyah. They're all on wahi from Allah. Nah. So these are the some of the reasons why Allah has the greatest of names. Look, look at the categories. Of, now Allah has names and descriptions. Why does it say al asma wa sifat? What's the difference between asma wa sifat? A name is something that you call somebody by. So Allah says, "Wallillahi al asma al husna fadhuhu biha." Allah has the most beautiful name. Call him by this. A name is somebody you call him by. Bashir, Abdullah. Okay, but a sifa is a characteristic, an attribute of the person. Uh-uh. It may, uh, every every name has a description. Voila. But every description, that's not a name for the person. So you would like for me to call you Ibrahim, but you wouldn't like me to call you 32 teeth. But you do have 32 teeth. Motherfucker, yeah, 32 teeth, how you doing? You say, listen, my name is Ibrahim. I do have 32 teeth, but don't call me that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Is it good to have 32 teeth? It is. That's praiseworthy. Some people don't have teeth. Yeah. Yeah. So the name is what you call somebody by and the characteristic, a sifa, a description, it's a, it's a character, t- characteristic, an attribution of that person. Yeah. But uh, like, like every, like every janet he has, the name he call Allah, like in, ma- in majority, we say Irkwin. In English, they say God. Okay, that, that, Okay. God is Ilahun. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al Ilah. Al Ilah. Ilahun is something that's ma'bud. Ilahun is ma'bud, something that's worshipped. The name of the the name of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ninety nine names and more. Allah's names are not limited to ninety nine. But his name is Allah. That's one of his names. Al Ilah. That's one of his names. Al Ila. My question is, uh, because we call we call him, we attribute him some names who he don't know. Like, no, but th- th- there, there, there's some things that are that describe Allah just by explaining who he is. Like, can I call Allah in English the Creator? Can I say, Oh Creator, help me? Yes, He's the Creator. Mm-hmm. I can, you, from just describing Him, you can call Him other than these Arabic names. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm just describing him. Nah. So let's look at some of the names, some some of the quality, some of the uh, main characteristics of his names and his descriptions. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Laysa kamithlihi shayun wa huwa sami'ul basir." This is a main qaida or uh, rule in the names and descriptions of Allah. There is nothing like him, and he is the hearing, the all seeing. So there's nothing like him, there's nothing equal to Allah. And there's other ayahs that convey this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٌ There's nothing equal to him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, هَلْ تَعْلَمُ لَهُ سَمِيَّةً Do you know anything similar to him? And uh, in, in, in Arabic, hell is istifam. What istifam is what? Islam is shubhu nafyin. No, shubhu nafyan. It's negation. It's like a negation. So when Allah says, Hal ta'lamu lahu samiyan, do you know anything like him? Meaning, you don't know anything no, like him. Neg- negation. negation. Shubhu nafyan. It's sort of, it's resembling a negation. negation. Nah. I'm sorry? Yeah. It's a rhetorical. Like, it's rhetorical. I'm okay. asking the question, but I'm not asking you an answer. Nah. Right. But the point is that if it, it feeds negation, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ أَظْلَمْ مِمَّنْ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا Who's more wrong? The one who created a lie on Allah. Meaning, لَا أَحَدْ أَظْلَمْ مِمَّنْ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا It means no one is more greater. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلٍ مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ 
And who has a better statement than the one who calls to Allah? بِمَعْنَى لَا أَحَدْ لَهُ قَوْلْ أَحْسَنْ مِنْ هَذَا For what does a, a question mean? What does a istifah mean? شُبْهُ نَفْيًا Not all the time, but so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what do we benefit from this ayat? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, nothing is like him. He negated that there's anything similar to him. But he affirmed for himself what? Who was Sami'ul Basir, that he hears and he sees. So if Allah affirmed that he sees and that he hears and he said there's nothing like him, meaning there's nothing like his singing and nothing like his hearing. Nothing like it. Na'am. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we, we, we want to take from here Allah, his descriptions on the first category is bad to a nephew. He has it. Sifat manfiya wa sifat thubutiya. He has descriptions that he affirmed for himself. Huwa al qawi. You know, he's the strong. Huwa al mateen. He's the mighty. Huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Now he's qadir. He's capable. Some of the descriptions have more than one name. Huwa ghafir, forgiven. Ghafur, he gives. Big sins, Ghaffar, he forgives a lot. Khairu Ghafirin, he's the best of those who forgive. Hu Rahman, he converts mercy. Rahim, mercy. Khairu Rahimin, the best of those who have mercy. Arhamur Rahimin, the most merciful of those who have mercy. Huwa Alimul Ghaib, he's the knower of the unseen. Huwa Allamul Ghuyub, he's the knower of the unseen. Naam. Wa Huwa Alim, he's the all knowing. Naam. And so on and so forth. Nah. So Allah affirms for him what? He, aff- he has descriptions that he affirms for himself. But he has descriptions that he negates for himself. And this is what comes in uh, Surah Al-Ikhlas. Allah says, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allah is one. Allahu samad. Al-samad is alladhi la yahtaj ila shay wa kullu shayin yahtaj ila. He doesn't need anything and everything is in need of him. He doesn't need anything. Everything is in need of him. Mm-hmm. Then Allah says, "Lam yalid." He has no children. He negated this. He negated it. Walam yulad, and he's not begotten. He's not the son of anything. Walam yakul lahu kufu wa nahad, and there's nothing equal to him. So Allah has some descriptions that He affirms for Himself. He's one. He's the summit, and He has neg- He has descriptions that are manfiya that He negated from Himself. And when Allah negates from Himself. A description is upon us to affirm the opposite of it in the highest light, in the most complete way. وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا And your Lord does not oppress anything. So when Allah negated from himself wrongdoing and oppression, we affirm for him the opposite of that on the highest level. So he doesn't oppress anybody because it's complete justice that he has. Complete on the highest level. So everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates from himself, he does it for a reason, even, even because some people claim that he has these descriptions. The Christians and the Jews and the Mushrikeen, they said that Allah has daughters. They said the Malaika, the daughters of Allah. And the Christians say that Allah is the father. And they also call him the son. So Allah cleared all that up from himself. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he further says, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامِ وَمَا مَسَّنَا مِنْ لُغُو And we created the heavens and the earth in six days. We created the heavens and the earth and everything that's between it in six days. And no fatigue has touched us. No fatigue. No tiredness. No so if we negate from Allah that he gets tired, we affirm for him that he has strength and capability on the highest of level. Who affirmed to Allah tiredness and fatigue? Yeah. What did they say? That's right. That's what's in the Injil. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Allah created the heavens and the earth in six days, and on the seventh day he rested. Oh. Subhanallah. <laughs> no, 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 no. He, 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 he relaxed. No, no, Allah. Allah is free from that. Allah doesn't have to relax. He did it and he wasn't tired. No. No. From the other descriptions, that, so I want, when we read the Quran, we want to keep this in mind that there are descriptions that Allah finds for himself and descriptions that he negates from himself. 
Let's look at this one here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu la ilaha illahu al-hayyu al-qayyum la ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la nawman. He affirmed for himself two names and two descriptions and negated from himself two. Al-hayy al-qayyum. What does al-hayy mean? It's a lie. Never dies. Never dies. Al-qayyum Al-Qayyum comes from the word Qa'im To exist Na'am Wallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala Qa'im bi nafsi Wa kullu shay'in yaqumu bihi Na'am Allah exists by itself And everything exists because of him Huwa Qayyum Na'am He is the cause of the existence of everything And he exists alone by himself La ta'akhuduhu sinatun No sinna Befalls him What's sinna? No sinna Huh? No, what's sinna? Sinatun wala na. Listen, listen, it's not Abu Hashid. We're not going to describe it like that with the head and the hand like that. We're going to talk. What you call it? Naas, naam, annuas, naam, annuas, annuas, sleepiness. Is sleep? No, not not that it's tired. Not that it's tired. Sleepiness in the eye, particularly. Sleepiness in the eye. You call nuas. I don't know the cough word. That's what they say in Eb. It's called nuas. Like this, like this. Sleepiness in the eye. In the eye, not in the neck. <laughs> in the eye. <laughs> okay. Time. Allah, this doesn't befall him. Drowsiness. Drowsiness. If you call it in English. Drowsy. Drowsiness. Nor any sleep befalls him. Now, and these are two descriptions. At the end of this surah, of this ayat, ayat to kursi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wasi'a kursiyuhu as-samawati wal and his kursi is the width of the heavens and the earth. This is his kursi. What is the kursi? Nah, the arsh is something. The arsh is the, the biggest of creations. And the kursi is something else. What is the kursi? Arsh? No, the arsh is something. Kursi is something else. Two certain things. Ibn Abbas says that the kursi Mawda Qadami Ar Rahman is the place of the two feet of Ar Rahman. It's a footstool. Footstool. Naam. Footstool is the place of the two feet of Ar Rahman. So, so in, in, to people's eyes, they think the kursi could they hear chairs. Right. They think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sitting. No, it's the stool. It's, it's, it's the place for the two feet of Ar-Rahman. No. No. This is a stool. Like this is the stool right here. Like this. It's a stool. It's like a chair, but there's no. It's no back. It's just a stool. Tayyip, let's continue. So the, the courtesy of our, our, of Allah is. That big. Yeah. 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 At the end of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, yeah. 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 His chair is the width of the heaven and the earth. What does La Ya'uduhu mean? Well, it doesn't fatigue him. Taking care and managing the heavens and the earth, it doesn't make him tired. This is, like, this is a negation. So what? Not la yamil, la yadul ala taab, la yutabu, wa la yurhiku. Naam, la yurhiku. Naam. It doesn't make him tired. It doesn't it doesn't fatigue him? Taking care and managing the heavens and the earth. So if we negate this from Allah, then we affirm from Him strength and capability. So these are one description of the names of Allah that they're what? That they are descriptions that we affirm Fubutiya wa Manfiya. Another description of Allah are descriptions and a and other descriptions are Fi'liya. 
that tear is a scripture, la yan anillah. It doesn't separate from Allah at any time. And the other scripture is fa'liya, is an action. Allah does it whenever He wants to do it. Whenever He wants to do it. For example, let's take a look at the things that never leave Allah. Allah's alim. Is there a time when Allah doesn't know? No. 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 Wallahu basir. There's a time that he doesn't see? No. no. Wallahu samir. Is a time that he doesn't hear? No. Allahu hay. He's alive. There's a time that he's not alive? No. There's not at that. These are, these are some of the fact that tiyat. They're always with Allah. They never separate from him. But Allah has other actions that he does when he wants to do it. Allah was angry up with them. Became angry. Is there times when Allah is not angry? Yes. yes. He gets angry whenever he wants to. Yes. Nah, he gets angry whenever he wants to. Nah. What? Fi hadith. Fi hadith on Ubay ibn Ka'ab. And he said, Ya, ayu ayatin andak a'zumu fi kitab Allah. He said, what ayat with you is the greatest in the book of Allah. And what I like about this, that he said, ayya ayya endek. He didn't just say, what ayat is the greatest that you have, you no. possessed it, that you memorized it. For, Ubayy ibn Ka'ab called it, Allahu la ilaha illa hu al hayy qayyum. For the Prophet, darabahu fi sadri. Hit him in his chest. Wa qala, la yahnika al am. La yahnika al am, Aba Mundir. And then that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to open up knowledge for him. Mm-hmm. Now, um, he was happy that he answered that question. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam praised this surah. There's other specific surahs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam encouraged. Now, um, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَقْتُلْ مُؤْمِنًا مُتَعَمِّدًا Whoever kills a Muslim or a mu'min on purpose, فَجَزَاؤُهُ جَهَنَّمْ For his reward is the hellfire. خَالِدًا فِيهَا Forever. وَغَدِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ And the anger of Allah, Allah has angered with him. وَلَعَنَ And Allah has cursed him. These are actions. Hold on. غَدِبَ That's not a name. That's not a name of Allah. وَلَعَنَ Allah is not his name. It's not his name. These are actions. So that's why we have descriptions. We have names and descriptions. Name you call him by. Then Allah has every name has a description. But every description doesn't have what? It doesn't have a name. Okay? But this is غَضِبَ Allah alay. Allah is upset with him. That's a description for Allah. And it's an action. يُسَمَّ هَذَا صِفَاتِ فِعْلِيَةِ These are the descriptions that are actions. Descriptions are actions according to what? Whenever Allah wills to do it, He does it. Na'am. Whenever He wills to do it. Na'am. What's that? He's talking about the believers. I mean, the, the, the kufar, they, if they die upon disbelief, then no, Khalidan no, Fiha. Now, don't, don't say Khalidina Fiha Abadan. That's, this ayah doesn't say Abadan. This ayah doesn't say Abadan. This Khalid says Khalidan. Tayyib. Tayyib. We, we left the topic. Our topic is not about this ayah. Okay, I will talk us about the names and descriptions of Allah. But this ayat, Allah says, whoever kills a, a, a believer on purpose, then he's in the hellfire forever. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك بي ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء. Allah doesn't forgive that partners would be worshipped other than him, but he forgives everything else. Tab, if somebody kills somebody on purpose, does Allah, can Allah forgive him? No. no I'm going to say can Allah. If, is, is this type of sin forgivable? Right. If somebody dies upon it? Yeah. When Allah says, Allah says in this verse, for jaza'uhu jahannamu khalidan fiha. His, 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 his punishment is the hellfire khalidan. Khalidan means staying in there. Allah, Allah, Nah, he he made tawbah. We're talking about somebody who died and make, didn't make tawbah. We're talking about somebody who died oh, upon this. Didn't make, make tawbah. We know Allah forgives all sins. Shirk. Allah forgives shirk. 
Does Allah forgive shirk? No. Yes. If somebody made tawbah. No. Okay. But if you don't We're talking about somebody who, you know. I, I, I heard, I heard uh, there's no trouble for this person. Daya, but now, so. The one, the one who killed someone. Right. Ahsant, ya Ahmed. If, if the, the, the family of this person that got killed, they forgive him. They don't want Dia. Mm. I mean, they don't want a Qasar. They don't want him to get killed. Mm. And they take the money, and he lives. Mm. And, he, and he dies. Would Allah forgive him <laughs> if he makes Taba? Huh? <laughs> no. For, first of all, Shaykh Uthameen, he says, Allah in this verse doesn't say Khalidan Fiha. Abadan. He doesn't say the word Abadan. That's first. Allah doesn't say forever. Khalid that means a long time. But then there's another hadith. The hadith is Umar is in Bukhari. And it shows that when you kill somebody, this leads to kufr. Mm. And somebody, when they kill somebody, this leads to kufr. A hadith, if I can remember it, is in Bukhari. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال لَنْ يَزَالِ الْمُؤْمِنْ عَلَى فُصْحَةٍ مِنْ دِينِهِ مَا لَمْ يَصُبْ then it comes on Abi Umama on other than Muslim Kali either Sabba Daman Haraman. I forgot the word. Qayyah or I forgot the word. Naam. Ballah. Naam. For either Sabba Daman Haraman Ballah. In this hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that a Muslim doesn't cease to be on Fushatin Mindini. Fushah means that his deen is wide. He can remember Allah, he can make salah, he can do this, he can go out, he can do this, he can do this, he can do that. Ma lam yasub daman haram. As long as he doesn't spill any haram blood. Either sabba daman haram and bayyak alayhi deen. His deen has become tight and closed on him. Tayyib, let's understand this. The Prophet talked about the aspect of the religion. We know the aspect of the dunya. Allah says that, that the Prophet said that his deen has become tight and narrow on him. We know from the aspect of the dunya, his world is now on him. If he killed somebody, he's in the house. He can't go out. He might have his bunduk, or he might have his gun with him. When he sleeps, if he has a sound, he's grabbing the bunduk. He's, his whole life has changed. If he, if, he's, if he got hurt, he can't even go to the hospital. He can't even go to the store. His life, his dunya is dayiq. So the prophet was quiet about explaining about his dunya. Because we know that if somebody kills somebody... He has to run, he has to move, he can't sleep, he can't even eat the way he used to. His dunya is bayik on him. So the prophet talked about his religion. His religion is so tight, he probably can't even say, Astaghfirullah. It's this deen, qadayik alayhi. He can't make tawbah. He probably might say, you salli. He can't even make salah. Because his deen is too bayik alayhi. It's too hard on him. It's too difficult. So this leaves that he what? That he just leaves Islam. Nah. So th- th- these sins, they're, 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 they're major sins because they lead to haram. Hey, they, they, uh, they overlook uh, fornication. Fornication leads to murder. It leads to murder. Cold-blooded murder. Murder, you're in America. You don't know murder? Homicide. <laughs> <laughs> Homicide. <Murder. laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> no. Fornication, it leads to murder. You know how many people are in jail because of some girlfriend, some dirty old girlfriend? You understand what I'm saying? You know how many women are in jail for some dirty old boyfriend that some other girl would? You know how many people got killed over some dirty action? It's not even an honorable. It's because it leads to that. And murder leads to what? It leads to kufr. We're not on that topic, but that's on another topic. But but Allah does forgive that sin. And Ibn Abbas hold the opinion one time that Allah doesn't forgive it, but he retracted. He retracted. He retracted. For example, if someone kill another people, and that person kill another people, if somebody a Muslim kills a Muslim, for on purpose, if he makes tauba. Allah forgive him. But this is not our topic in the class. Our class is in Asma wa Sifat. I understand the over the years. Yes. 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 Oh, so let's ask later. No. <laughs> I, I, I want to know what forget. Because like in my country. Okay. 
If someone he kill another musician, yeah. maybe the, the government he take it, right. put it in jail. Right. He do like one year, two years, okay. and he leave it. Okay. And he don't ask for give for the family. He don't pay the family. He's going to have to meet so with that Yom al Qiyamah. He's going to have to meet. But if he make Tuba, Allah will accept That's between him and Allah. Between him and the family, he's got to deal with that Yom al Qiyamah. So that's two different things. Are you supposed to go back, ask them for forgive, or pay them all? Yeah, he has to straighten it out. That's what he's supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm your. Uh, no, that's basically my. Um, what I was going to ask. The, the, the forgiveness of the family. Take it The forgiveness of the family is different than the forgiveness of Allah. Right, it's different. Mm-hmm. So even if the family forgives, he has to make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya'ati rajul yawm al qiyamah. يَحْمِلُ رَأْسَهُ فِي يَدِي A man's going to come, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, he's holding his head in his hand. وَيَمْسِكْ قَاتِلُهُ فِي يَدِي And he, the one who killed him, he has his hand with him. He says, يَا رَبِّ إِسْأَلْ هَذَا لَيْسْ قَتَلَنِي Ask this person why he killed me. And he's right in front of Allah. No, I'm <laughs> no this is on purpose. Accent is different. But accent is still a dia. It's still money that you have to pay. From the descriptions of Allah, are sifat khabariya that if Allah didn't explain it to us we would never know maybe you might contemplate and say if Allah is the Lord of the world he has to be strong he has to see he has to speak but there are other descriptions that are khabariya if Allah didn't explain it we would never know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says kullu man alayha fan everything on the earth is going to end wa yabqa wajhu rabbik and the face of your Lord remains Allah has a face Naam. Allah has a face. Na'am. Na'am. There's nothing similar to him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ يَدُ اللَّهِ مَغْلُولًا The Jews said the hand of Allah is tied. The hand of Allah is tied. His hand is tied. Na'am. His hand is tied up. They want with this that Allah is bakhil, that he's cheap. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refuted this in two ways. He said, that well, is two hands. Now, he doesn't just have one hand. He has two hands. Mabsut patan, that they're open. Yunfiku kefu yasha. He gives as he wills. And this ayat is yunfik. Allah, yunfik. It's an action of Allah. He gives. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a number of names that he's given. He's Razak. He's Razak. He's Khair Razakin. He's Al Wahhab. He's Al Wahhab. He's Al Akwab. Al Akram. He's Al Wahhab. He's Al Mu'ti.